of the main things I was looking at too. Um, I know that one of the things you had said before is that I was really treating the campaigns like ad sets. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I'm really using is our lookalike audiences. Would you recommend instead of splitting them out like, like lookalike Instagram AU, lookalike Instagram Facebook, have them all under like, like let's say it's customer lookalikes, have them all that customer lookalike CBO in just one campaign and then US Facebook, US Instagram AU, Facebook, AU, Instagram, all of that would be an ad set instead. Is that what you'd recommend? I think that sounds right. Yeah, but you said a lot. Yeah. You'd have your retargeting together. You'd have your lookalikes together. Retargeting is in one campaign, lookalikes in another campaign. Yeah. I have the, the other question I had is I like, for example, there's, there were two retargetings going only because the, this one was still getting a good return. And like, this was the newer one that was Your retargeting updated. should be doing seven to 11 X. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing I saw on your, on one of your videos talked about um, doing dynamic retargeting too, which I hadn't done. Um, and like, you can see this one's only, it's just retargeting video. Yeah. Views. Product catalog retargeting. That's what it is. Dynamic. Yeah. Um, we're getting like seven X's with those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think part of it too is like, I need to take the time to rebrand the ads better and. No, I mean, yeah, but I mean like your site mainly. Okay. Well, and then I don't think our ads have that same branding as the site. I don't know. I mean, did you make the videos? No. Oh. They're they're all videos like taken from different things. Yeah. So I do the site. Yep. And then basically, no, the videos are fine. Okay. The videos are fine. You just need to improve the site and then you can come back and improve the ads later. So the main thing is, let's see. The first thing you're going to do, we need to do as soon as you're able to go live, is just focus on the campaigns that were successful. We'll start with those and then we'll break into expanding your return and ad spend. Okay. Where yeah. That was your... the other question I had was more so how do you like scaling up? And I, I was reading some of the stuff that you said, like only really go up by 10% a day. Um, stuff like that. Cause I, I would have some that worked and after reading your stuff, I think my definition of work should actually be a little bit better than what I think is working. Like it should be a three minimum. Exactly. Um, so the other, some of the other questions I had too, is like with e-commerce, we, what I noticed that had the actual highest return and I kind of messed up this data by doing what I did and I shouldn't have done it, but I disabled like, when I did a full worldwide campaign, it had the highest return. It was like 5.5. .5. Um, the problem was the shipping was really expensive. So instead of making a separate campaign, I just changed it to be the less expensive company or the countries worldwide. So it was like EU, US, Australia, and like a couple others. Um, and I shouldn't have done that because it messed the data up. But in terms of shipping worldwide, is that what you're doing with your e-commerce clients or are you focusing on specific places? They do the US. Cause I actually noticed like our, our free, ROA. Free worldwide shipping on orders of 30 or more. I'm clicking here. Oh, they removed their top batch, but yeah, it was here. It was free shipping. Yeah, you should just offer free shipping. Yeah, we do. Okay, cool. Um, I just mean, I guess my question more so is on the ad targeting, if we should only be focusing on the U.S. or if we should just be focusing on worldwide or what? Uh, whichever is best. Okay. Yeah. The only thing that makes it difficult with Facebook is you can't really track how much the shipping cost is in your like ROA. 
as far as I know. Because our shipping cost is different to like the US and um, Australia and stuff, for example. The good thing is with the fulfillment center is if I can get that set up, it's a lot more consistent than it is with drop shipping. Yeah, that makes sense. Results reach, reach, and oh, might have removed impressions by accident. And then another thing I saw in your videos, you have a different ad manager than I do. So you have, I guess, a new one. Yeah, dude, you're on the, this thing looks like it's from 1990. <laughs> so I, I know another guy asked the same question about how to get that, but I'm guessing there's just like a thing that they roll out after you hit a certain ad spend or something, or they're just testing it or what? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's dependent per, I mean, per user, like where you're located, how much you're spending, how much testing you're doing. They're not going to roll you out unless you're doing a lot of testing, spend, and then also just you got to be in a good location sometimes. All right, let's see. Do you know if that's something that they're going to roll out to everybody? Because I saw your like your screenshots. They look so much easier than this. Oh, dude, it's a million times easier. That's what was taking me so long over here. I was like, man, this thing's slow. All right, so wow, that's interesting. You're ROAS looks close to three with all your top purchases. And then we do that and then, okay. Yeah, I mean, we got, that's not bad. So basically. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. It, it, I got to the point where it's like not bad, but I f it felt like I had reached kind of my limit. A without. diminished return. That too, yeah. And I just didn't really know what the best way What's to What's your break even ROAS? It's like 1.7. 1.7, yeah, that's everybody. Really? Yeah, everybody's 1.7 and 1.8. That's I've never met anybody who's outside of those numbers. I think if we do the fulfillment, it might actually be 1.6, but realistically, it'll probably stay 1.7. <laughs> yep. So you just everything below a two. You just cut all of those below a two. Yeah. And then you come here. You're off. You'd rank it by. Yep. Cut everything below a two. And then you would come here, rank it again. This is how you're going to optimize everything. Cut everything below a two. With the new ads manager, we could actually rank it by the row S, but yours is like, you know, you're going to have to manually deselect these. What a pain. Everything below a two, turn off. You have a million turned on. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. Stuff. So I was like, testing let's, a lot. <laughs> you've turned off your top three. Nice. No, not nice. You should. So what I actually did with the top those top three um, was some strategy that I noticed where they said, okay, if a campaign is only giving it a little tiny budget, like there was a campaign that had spent, you know, this thing is like three hundred dollars, but it had only given that top one, that top roa, like it had only given it about ten dollars. Um, I moved it into its own campaign and then it didn't do as well. No. Who told you that? It was just something I read. <laughs> but no. obviously that wasn't like... It no, because it's your three best. We have a campaign that's only spent like 20 bucks and it's made like 380, but it's been running. It barely, it gets like a dollar every like week. So... But it still has like no a 29X way... ROAS. Okay, that makes sense. Is there no way to tell Facebook like, hey, give this more money? Or is no, it just, I mean, shouldn't? it just can't. It's not going to give it more money because it's just not. It's not a big enough audience size, and it doesn't think it can win them any conversions. So it's just not placing more money there. It wouldn't okay. be successful if it had more spend. So it's so it's just let Facebook putting in front put of a little bit of money in there because it's still positive. I mean, like, look, these are big numbers for you. They're the biggest. So yeah. that article made you turn off whatever you ended up looking at. Made you turn off your three best campaigns. I mean, your yep. three best ad sets. That's pretty sad. So, all right, I just pretended that I cut it all the other ad sets. We only kept these 15, go to 2.72. Okay. That took you from a one point yeah. to a 2.72. Yeah, just by removing those. Nearly, yeah, just by removing the others. And, and then, then we come here and we do the same thing. We just rank it, select all, 
and we just oh my god and then you just come and remove all these others There's you would actually turn these off but they're actually all most of them point to the same ads though don't matter do you know if there's a better way to do that? Like I just have them pointing to the add my post ID. No, that's fine. Okay. I mean, the gist of what I've seen is basically like go through there, sort by whatever ROA you're trying to get and then turn off all the others. I think part of my questioning is also in like structuring. It seems like I should restructure how I do it instead of having all these different campaigns. Just do like one for the lookalikes and one for the retargeting and then have everything Boom. else under an ad set. I just took it to a 3.17. Nice. You went from a 1.7 to a 3.17 in a matter of clicks. You just got to get better optimization. Right. You see how easy that was? Right. I just made a few little tweaks. I got rid of all your losers. You know, you don't put your, you don't put your like, it, it, uh, were you ever in track? like running no yeah well you know like the four by fours where there's like they hand off the baton yeah like you don't put like your three fastest runner and then throw like you know some like 300 pound like guy who can't even run in there yeah because like they could be the three fastest and they get all the way around the lap and then they hand it to the final guy who's like 400 pounds and can barely walk and the dude doesn't finish the race and all the other people end up passing him yeah so you're basically doing all this work and then cutting yourself short at the very end that's what you're doing. Okay. You put in all this legwork to get yourself a 3.17, but you're cutting yourself short by bringing, your, bringing yourself all the way back down to a 1.7, which is break even for you. All right. So you just you could just, everything under like 2.5 or something. That's standards. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. Then I guess the other question. Um, and was, if you, I mean, sorry. if you really want to take it further, the next best thing is, well, a bulk of your purchases are from here down. So let's see, 3.78 to your two. Anything above a 3.78 is just, uh, it's luck. This one might be a breakout one, which is not bad, five. But the rest of these just have one. So realistically, you're, you, the best average you could get to is close to, a, you could be at a 3.5 to 7. Okay. Uh -huh. You could be, but I would take it here. You know, quite honestly, you could probably even cut everything below it. Two point. No. Yeah, no, I'd keep it. I, I yeah, this is good. 3.17 because that's already more, that's almost like double. So what cut everything below a two yeah. basically. This is super profitable for you at a 3.17. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, that, you spend, look, if you spent 2,700, you make 8,666. Is right. that good? Right. Yeah. You get, Is that good for you? You get about 4,000 back. So you get about 200% return. 4,000 back. I don't know what math you're doing. Well, after you're about after like, product cost. Yeah. I mean, that's still yeah. good. 4,000 yeah. profit. Are you for kidding? Sure. Run this monthly. You're only spending 2,700 and you're making 4K profit every single month. Right. You take this to 5,000 spend. Boom. Now you're hitting 10K in profit. Right. And yeah. if you get behind the wheel and we come through here and we not only just optimize, but we end up making those tweaks to your site, we end up making the tweaks to your audiences and improving the things that you haven't done. Boom. You're sitting on a 4.5 of 5X. Now you're like, yeah, now dude, that's like huge. That would be like every 2,000 bucks, you'd be hitting like 13K. You'd be profiting like anywhere between 9K, right. 9K. Yeah, I get it. Eight nine k is enough to like make this a full time kick. For sure. Um, the other, the only other question, because like I know that you're super busy too. I don't want to take a whole bunch of your time. But the other question I had, I know one of the things I need to do is restructure how the campaigns are. Um, would you recommend keeping this other stuff running, or just starting with the, like fresh campaigns where it's just one campaign for the lookalikes, one campaign for retargeting, and then having the ad sets underneath? Exactly like, everything I have selected here needs to be on and running in the in the campaign that it was before or yeah new you don't mess with this don't because mess it's with like it. okay. dude you're at a 3.17 i'm no, okay. no reason to complain yes it's set up like you know a wild maze <laughs> but yeah. that's fine because it's still not like you know a half bad return 
Okay. But it could be much better. But before we just, you know, jump ship, we're going to transition into something that's better. Okay. And then, and then performing well, then we can make a full switch. Okay. And then if, like, let's say if I set up a, just the CBO where I had a lookalike and set all this up in a completely separate campaign, still had these running, would they compete against each other? Hmm. So if I set up... Um, yeah, they would compete against each yeah. other. So you don't want to do that, basically. No. No. Okay. So you could take the interest route if you want to test it. Okay. But you have enough data for the lookalike. So I mean, like... Yeah, you know, I at the same time, like I said, you could be profiting 4K and we could just take these to a 5K spin and be getting 9, 10 profit. 9, 10 okay. profit. And like, I don't know what you're trying, what are you trying to get to in profit monthly? I mean, it doesn't, a, a 10K would be fine. Cool. Yeah. I have other like we could get you, we, too, so. Yeah. Like we could get this to a 10K monthly running profit and then just like, you know, let it run. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Why, like, you know, cause a bunch of chaos some other direction when we could just be knocking you 10K profit every month from this? And then right. build up your other lanes of flow, cash flow. Okay. Yeah, and it looks like there's a lot of these that got turned off. Really You're operating this out of a, um, a business bank account? Yeah. I actually have it under cool. my S-Corp. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so this is all under its own account. Yeah. Cool. Good. Good, good. Yep. So, I mean, like, all these need to be on. All these need to be on. Honestly, I'd flip these back on now. Yeah, we can just... And then you need to turn off all now. those other things that I didn't have selected. You On the new manager, you can do... Bulk. No, like, inverse selection, and then auto turn off. <laughs> <laughs> you can do like auto one, turn off if it's below a gonna, certain amount you're gonna spend yeah yeah you can but on this one you're gonna manually go through and turn off each little button sweet um and then when i do end up turning it on i'm gonna i have to scale like uh on a percentage basis per day kind of thing the ones that are working yeah exactly and on the new manager, we could tell which one has overlap, but we can't on this one. That's another thing, man. Oh, they don't. That's a cool tool. I wish I had that. Well, dude, it would be really important because we can see the learning limited stuff that's impacting your ads. Because at this point, what ends up happening is like your spend gets to a certain level where it actually becomes important when you have this many campaigns and ad sets. We got to see what's overlapping because you could be getting like, uh -oh. you know, you might be getting a 3.17 now, but like, the thing is, even with that 3.17, like you could realistically be at a four or five just because right. you might not know that your campaigns are competing against each other because you have so right. many of them. Like the spend isn't able to switch between whenever it's competing. Right. So like there could um, be massive overlap. Yeah, I think right now I had campaigns, I had three different one, three different targets was US, Australia, Denmark, and then I had a worldwide one that was doing pretty well. Um, so I was hoping they weren't competing against Ooh, each other. Yeah, here you go. Here's another thing. This is called creative reporting. You use this? You don't? I have not. No, I have this not is your best. It. This is going to be your new best tool. You just come in here and it groups all of your same ads together. You just come in here. Rather That's than having nice. to go measle, weasel them all out, go to your very bottom one, turn it off, go to your very bottom one, 2.57. Well, actually, all these are above a two, believe it or not. But that's because we have them selected. I already did that for you. Yeah, we do. But if I deselect and I bring you back to what you had. Yeah. Look at all these. You know, that's disgusting. You got to turn that off, that off, that off, that off, that off. Look at that. You have 40, 50. You have over like a 200 of these ads running at this. Look at how big this spend is that you have going. Oh, that's your purchase conversion. But look at this spend. Yeah. That could have been every 2,700 is 4K profit for you or more. Look at that. That's You missed out on yeah. probably about mm, six, eight. Ooh, looks like about 11,000 in profit you're missing here. Right. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like literally just those changes alone, keeping the spin the same, you would be like hitting like, you know, you'd be doing some heavy hitting. Yeah. But the thing is three. like, 
are you even able to get to those numbers because the corona yeah i can't we can't even turn them on yet it's ridiculous like, you know you know these things and like we're here and like we could be doing it but like yeah you gotta first yeah, that's why i didn't want to i didn't want to like pay to start and then every week be like oh is the virus done yet nope all right well with nothing to report yet you know i wanted to start uh i definitely want to be in a program with you and like work on it but after we can actually sell something whenever the corona has passed yep, yeah <laughs> whenever they find a cure or something for what it. other ad accounts are you running just this one i um, mm. i've tried i've done stuff in the past like for other businesses but it's always been on an incredibly small scale what about, uh, well, I guess if you're not doing wholesale and real estate, then it's a different story. Yeah. I'm not like running ads for any of that. I'm just investing. Um, I had like an event I did probably three years ago that I ran ads for and um, it was a way different game then. It's another thing. It seems like since like I've been doing this lately is it seems that in like Facebook's automatic stuff almost always seems to work better than anything else I've tried. Like I looked at Adspresso and it would show you oh, the time of day that had the highest conversions and stuff. And I tried limiting it by that. And then it just tanked the result. No, that's just, that's a silly idea. No, that doesn't work. Yeah. It didn't. The data is completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. They're, no, looking at it in silo. <laughs> They're looking at it in a silo. That's wrong. Yeah. And then what do you, what is your billing set to on this? I think it was just billing me 200 every time I hit the 200 threshold or something Change or you, to 900 to 900. Yeah. Because then you have more cash on hand because what you'll have more cash on hand in your account and you can scale faster without having to be built so frequently. Okay. Let me write this down too hard because then you'll be receiving payments faster than you are paying expenses. And it's just one of those um, credit things. I want to let me type. I would change your billing to 900 and then are you running it on a credit card? It's not letting me type for some weird reason. Oh uh, yeah. I do it on a credit card cause I get 2% back. 2%? Yeah. What card is that? City double cash. Hmm. You should switch to the, uh, Chase Inc business preferred. You get more what points. Is that? What does That's, that give uh, you? You'll, you'll get like a lot more points per spend. It's the highest rewarding in advertising spend. Interesting. Is it just because it's business? So they, they focus on that? Is the credit card you're using now not business? No. Oh my it's gosh. not business specific. Dude, you got to switch to a business card. You'll okay. get like 80,000 points just off of 5K in spend. And that's like literally like nearly $1,000. In points. Holy crap, that's like 15%. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's the reward. And then the spend, I think it's, I forget what the exact number is, but it's like, it's a lot, dude. It's a yeah. really lot. We like, it's great to use for advertising. Yeah. Yeah. I, spe I'm, I can imagine for you with clients, if you're doing the billing too, that's awesome. Mm hmm. Yeah, it adds up fast. I earn like a plane ticket every week. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. My my buddy does that. He runs like Google ads for companies and then he just flies for free. Yeah. So it happens. It goes like the spend adds up a lot of points. Yeah. Okay. I'll check out tracing business preferred. Because then you have about a 60 day window before you ever spend a dollar of your own money on the ads. And by that point you would have already recouped four to 10,000 bucks. More than that, you would have, you would have, gotten like over 10k in cash yeah into your account yeah and yeah then i mean would have been able to be like well i'm gonna scale this up even faster take it to a thousand daily Boom. is it do you think it's it's wise to just like up it from the hundred a day that it's spending to a thousand or is it better to just do it like 10 percent at a time only if you have 50 pur purchases or more in the last seven days we have, yeah, we like only do that with campaign. Window. Yeah. We'll take a campaign from doing like 40 daily spend to like 800 daily spend, like literally like 20 exit, but that's only because like it'll have so many conversions in a, such a short period of time that it has enough data to be able to go with any scale. Basically like 
if that's the case, no matter what, it's always going to work out just about. Yeah. Okay. Too small. Like we've yeah. retargeting is going for 400 daily for a client. Like that's a retargeting 400 daily is a lot for retargeting. Yeah. So what would you recommend on like your retargeting budget? Well, in their case, it's different because their audience size, but I'm just saying like you can take it up depending on how big your audience is. Okay. And, but only do it if you're actually getting over 50 purchases in a short amount of time, because then I'm not. Can scale. it doesn't really matter how fast you scale, honestly, like it yeah. might interrupt it subtly, but like it actually can handle it in most cases, especially if the audience is over a million. So, so like basically you could, like, you could go from like 10 to 20 daily spend or 50 to hundred daily spend to like 400 daily spend and not really run into any issues at all. If anything, it'll be okay. great. You'll see awesome numbers. So that's like basically you optimize the ad sets to get to that 50 purchases in a seven day window. And then yeah, but you're going to want more than 50. So like one to seven, let's see if you ever got 50 on any of these ad sets. I didn't, I can tell you now before. Yeah. Yeah. If you've never, I mean, that's just it, the those. 19th is when the ad started on this account. I can, yeah, I, can guarantee you it didn't exactly so like those are those things like once you do okay then it's like bam take off so don't scale it until you can get that no 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 you can scale 10 to 15 percent daily because it's going to take too long to get to 50 purchases without scaling that's where the 5 to 10 to 15 percent goes okay so you can keep subtly increasing so you don't disturb it too heavily and you can like maintain growing your purchases but then once you're hitting 50 purchases consistently, whether it's a hundred daily spend, whatever it takes you to get there, like you can really take it after that. Once it's getting 50 purchases consistently on a week after week, let it run mm-hmm. for like two weeks. And if it does hit it both times, then take it to like from a hundred daily to like 500 or a thousand daily and see what happens. It'd be really okay. cool. So like as soon as you hit that, that threshold, then you just up it. Yeah, but let it run for about two weeks, like one to two weeks to make sure like the first week it hits 50, okay. the second week it's going to do it because you then you know it's two. working. Okay. Yeah, the good thing too about this is that there's huge audiences, like the 1% lookalikes for the US were 2.2 million people, I think. So that's just the 1% only in the US. So I had there's a lot of people to target here, but I just didn't want to scale up and ruin my my audience by spending too much, you know? No, you won't. Right. I mean, like you're going to be making 4,000 profit already. I was just showing you that. That's great, dude. If you just kept it there monthly, like that's still great. I I mean, like we can get it to the 10K profit and then like, you know, that's good. I mean, like that's literally 120K a year. Yeah. Yeah. Passive because it runs itself. Do you know what your total daily spin was overall? It was between, it, it depended on the day because I was doing a lot of testing and stuff, but it was like between like 200 to 400 a day, I think. Like you'd look at just, uh, yeah, what is that? 1100 divided by three, that's 300. Yeah, it's 300. Around there. I mean, I'm comfortable with, with spending that much on the ads because the return's still there. It just was like, you know, doing slightly more than breaking even. Well, yeah. And that's because you weren't optimizing and I just showed you how to get it to 3.17 and then we can take it to the five X. Yeah. I think, um, on 14 K revenue, we had about 2000 profit. Yeah. Well, that's because you spent an outrageous amount early on. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I I showed you the 2,700 with the 8,600 coming out, which is the four K. Yeah. That is much more appealing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and then you have the 60-day running window and you're just going to be sitting on piles of cash. Yeah, that's another thing we noticed. We turned off all the ads and we still have had sales trickle in. Mm-hmm. It's because it's building up. Over time, the momentum grows even more. Yeah. Is that, I mean, you, that's were just like- running, you were only running for like a month. Imagine if you'd given this like three months of running time yeah. You would have Stupid phenomenal coronavirus. You'd be in five X, six X's by now. Yeah. Running huge numbers. You'd Stupid be profiting coronavirus. 12. Yeah, it's dangerous, man. Yeah. It, it's every stuff, every factory we've talked to, they're all shut down right now. Um yeah. they don't ship out. China's like not shipping out packages. We had a lot of orders that we thought would get out, but then they were stuck in the ports. They're just like all stuck in the ports right now. It sucks. Uh, Wow. 
but yeah, cool. Well, I think this, this helps get me on track. Um, I'll set up all this stuff for when we get going and then, um, I've been following on like some of your posts and stuff. I'll just keep doing that. And then once we actually get able to ship stuff out, then we can get on some weekly calls. Cool. I appreciate it, man. It's helped, helped a lot so far. Awesome. No problem. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. There we go. See the curves. You got to have sharper curves. Did you just update this site? I feel like it looked different. Yeah. A few weeks ago. It's all curved. You got to start doing the curves. Especially like this. This is even better. It's better for e-com though. Yep. See it? It's all branded clean design. That's, an e that's easy to change. Yeah. And then like you got to have big descriptions. They didn't, they had one word of descriptions. I was like, y'all got to make these. My team, yeah, they're my team made the audit. I'm not going to say I did, but my team ended up recommending them to pull out all the big points. Oh, that's actually good. No, this is fine. This is clean. This is yeah. clean. No, that's good. That's fine. You just got to, I mean, this text is different. 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 I mean, you have like 60 fonts here. Yeah. There's zero consistency. See? Consistent, consistent, consistent. Here, I'm going to pull up a notepad consistent. over this.